Hey guys, welcome back to part three in this tutorial series. Uh, so for this one, I want to dig further into our S3 controller, right? And build this out a little bit and sort of try and finish off as much as we can. I think we can wrap it up in the next clip. Um, so I really want to try and finish this off. So let's just jump straight back into it and pick up where we were. So where we left off was we had our put object, uh, our put object function working correctly. We had that passed back to the index.js and we're able to execute it there and we're able to get our file in S3. So we know our put object's working as intended, which is awesome. But what we're doing at the moment is we're taking that file from our disk locally on my laptop here and then putting it into S3. What I really want to do is I want to grab that from our original S3 bucket and then process it in Lambda and then put that into the resized bucket. So we're going to need to do a get on the object first out of the original bucket. So let's just jump in and straight up make that function right now. So our get object is actually going to be really, really similar to our put object. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy and paste our put object and just put it above here. I'm going to change this name to get uh, and I'm not going to pass in a body because we're not going to get a specific body. We're just going to sort of get the whole object and that object's going to pass back the, the object that we get back from it. Um, and that's going to have a body property which will contain a buffer of the item that we're actually getting or the key that we're getting out of S3. So all I really need to do is pass in the bucket in which I want to get the item from and the key that I want to get out of the bucket. Pretty simple. Um, I'm going to keep our promise in here because I want to also use this as a promise. Um, but I'm also going to remove this and just keep the bucket and the key as the parameters. And of course, let's just change this to a get object rather than a put object. So believe it or not, it's really that easy to just have a get and a put. So now I have a get and now I have a put, but all I need to do is just simply export that and now it becomes available in the index.js. Okay, so coming back to our index.js now, we need to make a couple of changes so that this sort of makes sense. The first thing we want to do is get the file out of the original bucket, right? Then process it, then put it in the resize bucket. So what we need to do is we can call our S3 get object, uh, and what we need to do is pass in the name of the original bucket. So let's say the original bucket is just called Flynn bucket, right? And the resize bucket is what we're going to put it in once we resize it. So Flynn bucket is there now, uh, but I also need to pass in the key of the object. Whoops. So the key of the object is going to be cat3.jpg. So this is the actual file that we're going to pick up first, right? So now that we have that in place, we can then sort of start to chain things together. And if you remember, with our S3 get object, we made this a promise. And when we make a promise, we can add in the functionality to chain it with other promises. So what we want to do now is we want to essentially say dot then and dot then is a method that is available on a promise object. That means that you want to do something after that promise has been fulfilled or rejected in a case where you would want to catch it. That's like a try catch. We're going to add in a catch functionality here in shortly, which will basically say that if any of the promises get rejected or if anything happens here, then reject with this data and pass it to the catch scope in the outer blocks. So we'll do that in a moment here. But first, I want to say dot then, and inside this, I'm going to put in a function that contains the data that comes out of this promise. So if I just call this data, uh, I don't want to call it data. I should call it data. I'm Australian, and I should call it data. I think over the years, I've just started calling it data. Huh. Anyway. Um, so what data is here is actually the output of this. So when it does the get object, it's going to uh, it's going to pass that back to the next step, and the output or whatever is in this, so the object that contains like the properties of that S3 object, is going to be in this variable here called data. <laughs> so uh, what I want to do with that data is I essentially want to resize it, right? I want to resize it. And I want to I want to resize the body of it because the body is the buffer. So it's a little bit confusing, right? I get the object from S3, and it contains multiple properties like the size, the date that it was put up there, and it contains a property called body. And body contains a buffer object, and that buffer object can be fed into our image magic to take and resize. And then we also produce a buffer out of that that we're going to use to put into our put object, right? Pretty simple. So now I can sort of pick this whole thing up and I can go, hmm, let me just move this in here, right? Because I essentially am going to be processing this data here that's in this data variable. So now that we have data in our then here, in our then method, 
This data is actually what we want to pass in to our image magic function because this is what we actually want to transform. This is what we actually want to resize. So all we need to do is actually dump this right in here. Remember that if we look back to the documentation, we remember that it said that GM can actually take a buffer rather than a file path. And we've been using a file path up until now, but we can simply just pass in a buffer of information and it will work out that buffer and then resize it and then along we go. Now this object called data actually contains a property called body. Now in the body is the buffer, right? So in the body of the object that we pull down is the buffer and we can pass a buffer directly into our image magic machine right here. So this is in here now. So what's actually going to happen is it's going to pull this buffer in, it's going to resize it, and then it's going to put the resized image back into a buffer, right? Which is now in data. And then we're going to, if there's an error, we can console log that error, else we're going to put that in to S3. But now we're not doing the buffer anymore. We're simply going to do data. So hopefully that makes sense, but you can really read this from top to bottom, right? We're doing an S3 get on this item, then the output of that will be stored in here. Then we're going to take that object and we're going to access the body property and we're going to feed that into GM, which is our image magic. And then we're going to resize that to 100, 100, put that into a buffer. The data variable then contains the buffer. Then we're going to feed that buffer into an S3 put object into this bucket and that key. Pretty simple, okay? So let's go and test this and make sure it all works because that sounds a little bit crazy. So let's just make sure this works as intended. So here we are in S3 and you can see I have the cat3.jpg file in here and I'm in the Flynn bucket. So I'm not in the resize bucket yet, I'm in the one that is the original source bucket. So jumping back over to our code, we should be able to see here that we see the Flynn bucket cat3 and we're going to be putting it in Flynn bucket resize and cat3 resize. So let's go ahead and run this now and see how it goes. So we can do a node index and give that a run. So we've got nothing in the output, um, but what we can do is we can check our bucket. So if we do an AWS S3 LS and we look in the resize bucket, we can see we have the cat3 resize in there. So, and you can see it just got put in there uh, as of just now. So you can see the time and that's it just there. So we can go and download that as well and ensure, but I can see it's there. So we know that's working as intended. So that's pretty cool. We're able to sort of feed this all the way down uh, and really just from, you know, that's like really 10 lines of code essentially, uh, all nicely squished together and you can really see how that's gonna work. But what about some basic error handling and stuff? I, I think we need to brush this up a little bit. So in the next clip, I wanna sort of finish this off, refine it a little bit, just polish it up and then we'll actually test it out. And we'll talk about some of the tools you can use to speed up the development when you're making Lambda functions like this.